engineer and newswire, we're turning seawater into fuel, making disposable drones, and taking a look at a bionic kangaroo. What? Reduce, reuse, and recycle. Now that's garbage, especially as our culture weans off of simple waste en route to complex one and done electronics, as well as other intensely over engineered phenomena. Enter the University of Sheffield, where engineers are 3D printing unmanned aircraft. The thought is that production costs could be low enough that this would lead to disposable UAVs to be sent on one way flights for delivery, search, and reconnaissance purposes. I've seen a similar wasteland when my mother handed out those foam airplanes as a party favor. Just out of wasteland of non-biodegradable parts. Engineers at Sheffield's Advanced Manufacturing Research Center have already printed a 1.5 meter wide prototype which weighs less than 2 kilograms and is made up of 9 parts that are snapped together. What I find most interesting is that this polymer craft could eventually be built and deployed in remote situations in as little as 24 hours but you're gonna need to uh, work on that timeline for mission critical operations. The UAV completed the test flight as a glider. Researchers are now developing an electric ducted fan propulsion system that will fit into the plane's central spine. For their next project, the team wants to develop a guidance UAV that operators can control while wearing first person goggles. Google Glass, anybody? I'm just happy they developed a flying intelligence system as disposable as the carrier pigeon. <laughs> Take that, PETA. Festo has developed a bionic kangaroo that combines pneumatic and electrical drive technology to produce a highly dynamic system which realistically emulates the jumping behavior of real kangaroos. According to Festo, this marsupial wannabe can efficiently recover energy from one jump to help it make another jump. Without this capability, kangaroos, the real ones, will get very tired very quickly, but by using their tendons like elastic springs, the animals can bound at a high speed efficiently for substantial periods of time. It's possible. The robotic kangaroo weighs 15 pounds and stands about three feet high. It can jump one foot vertically and about two feet horizontally. A small compressor or storage tank provides high pressure air for the pneumatic muscles that power the jumping, Lightweight batteries drive everything and a sophisticated kinematic control system keeps the robot from toppling over. The stable jump kinematics plus the precise control technology ensures stability when jumping and landing. The consistent lightweight construction facilitates the unique jumping behavior and it is controlled by gestures. And that's it. <laughs> Researchers at the Materials Science and Technology Division of the U.S. Naval Research Lab have demonstrated a new conversion method that can turn seawater into fuel for naval ships. Thanks to this process, NRL scientists used liquid hydrocarbons to power a small combustion engine. Since the initial success, the researchers are now upscaling to a commercial-sized process. The new hydrocarbon fuel is expected to cost between three and five bucks a gallon, and it would rid the U.S. fleet of reliance on 15 oil tankers to refuel its 289 vessels and 72 submarines. After researchers extract carbon dioxide and hydrogen gas from seawater, the gases are converted to fuel via a gas-to-liquids process using catalytic converters. So it's like a high-energy condensation process. The researchers claim that we're still a good 10 years away from producing the fuel on an industrial scale, but the Navy has already reached out to universities to help streamline the process and make the gas collection more efficient. <laughs> gas collection. Do you have story ideas? Comment below and we'll cover them in the next episode. For the PD&D channel, I'm Megan Zimba and this has been your Engineering Newswire. <laughs>